Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, it's football at four. All right, football at four, powered by Inside the Birds. Andrew DiCecco joins us on Thursdays. So, Andrew will join us right now. I'm your host, Ryan Rothstein, Nick Earnshaw, also your host here. We're filling in for Mike Gill. Live at Chickie and Pete's inside the Tropicana Casino out in Atlantic City, 609-403-0973 uh, is the text board. Uh, so let's bring Andrew into the conversation now to help us uh, dissect all the latest news and notes surrounding surrounding the Eagles. Um, Andrew, how we doing, my friend? Ryan, I'm doing well. How are you, my man? Doing good, brother. Always enjoy speaking to you here. So let's uh, let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Um, a lot to a lot to get into this conversation. And let's just uh, let's start with an article that you wrote for InsideTheBirds.com. Post it yesterday on the website. So go check it out for those of you listening. Uh, titled "Reaping the Benefits: The Slim Reaper, Baby." Devontae Smith has been. <laughs> Uh, an absolute stud added to the stud list for the Philadelphia Eagles this season. But Andrew, what have you seen uh, from Devonte Smith lately in this, uh, you know, late season outbreak of production? I thought he really stepped up in the wake of Dallas Goddard's injury and took a little bit of the burden off of AJ Brown. He really settled into that role as being that short to intermediary option But he also caught some deep passes, and his body control is just tremendous. And he's a really good security blanket for any quarterback, really. And I thought he really came into his own when he when there wasn't necessarily uh, three different mouths to feed, as far as you know, adding Dallas Goddard into the mix. And you really saw that he was able to have his own role, and and that really didn't it, it didn't deteriorate when Dallas came into the game last week when he returned after five games absence. He had uh, 113 yards and two touchdowns, and Goddard still got his. He had three receptions for 67 yards, and he played 94% of the snaps. So I think they started to find uh, a really good balance in how to allocate the, the targets, and you really were able to see how Devontae was able to add a new, di- another dimension to what was already a prolific offense. Yeah, it's, it's really remarkable what this offense has been able to do. Miles Sanders, close to 1,200 rushing yards, what A.J. Brown has done, maybe the best season ever by an Eagles wide receiver. Add Devontae Smith to the list. Obviously, we know what Jalen Hurts has been doing uh, when he's been healthy, which has been basically all season long up to this point, Andrew. Um, is there any <laughs> is there any cause for legitimate concern, right? Because this Eagles team is still a, a pretty damn good football team, all right? I'll, I'll break that. That's hot off the presses. Uh, you know, in case anyone didn't know there, but you know, <laughs> you give up 40 points to the Dallas Cowboys offense on Christmas Eve in a big game. Uh, injuries are starting to pile up a little bit, at least compared to what you weren't dealing with not too long ago. Uh, still need one more win. No Jalen. It seems like on uh, on this weekend against their their matchup against the Saints. So, concern meter high, low, non-existent. Well, the, actually, the injury report just came out, and for what it's worth, Jalen was a limited participant this week, so, or for today. So we'll see how that ultimately shakes out. But to your question, Ryan, it, it, it's kind of hard for me to be overly concerned with the state of the Eagles right now, even you know, in, in light of the injuries that have sort of piled up. Because of what they have from a leadership perspective in that locker room, you heard someone like a Fletcher Cox say, and this is his words, not mine, that the team was pissed off a pissed off locker room you have a lot of veterans you know Darius Slay's not used to getting beat like that you know that was a nationally televised game I think a lot of these guys are going to take that personally and use that moving forward I mean anytime they faced any sort of adversity this season Ryan I think it's fair to say the Eagles have responded favorably the following week and that all starts with the head coach and his messaging throughout the week so I wouldn't be overly concerned now if you start to see it this week that's not that's not a hiccup that's a pattern and that is something that you want to hit the panic button and, and maybe and start to re uh, retrace your steps and figure out you know maybe they need to try something different and different personnel and things like that but I think they'll be able to to kind of uh build off of last week's little bit of adversity and move forward against the Saints this weekend. Hey Andrew, it's Nick here. Uh we've been talking a lot about the injuries uh to the Eagles that they have sustained 
throughout this week. One guy that, that popped up on the injury report was Miles Sanders. Uh, he's been, he's been, he was a limited participant today, missed practice yesterday. What do you make uh, of him being injured? Uh, do you think he'll have less snaps uh, on, on Sunday? Or do you think it'll, it'll affect his game at all? Yeah, and that's a fair question. And Miles has seen a larger workload this season more than he ever has throughout his career thus far. And and he's played, he's performed pretty well. But I would say that injuries have been sort of a uh, sort of a, a staple with uh, sort of followed him around throughout his career. Um, and I think he's someone you really want to keep fresh because he has been impactful this season. Obviously, the last couple of weeks he's had a turnover against the Bears and a turnover. Uh, against the Cowboys on Christmas Eve, but I think he's someone that you really want to keep fresh because there is a significant drop off behind him as far as talent. Boston Scott's not somebody that you want, you know, taking on the lion's share of the carries. Kenny Gainwell is more of a complimentary running back, but Miles is another another player. We mentioned Devontae Smith earlier, who adds another dimension to the to the Eagles' offense and what he's been able to do has largely made the offense what it is and as, as explosive as what it is. So, I mean. I wouldn't make too much of it, but if there's any hindrance or any sort of hesitation, I would, I would, I probably would wane off of, not, not lean on him necessarily as much as you ordinarily would, because you should be able to frankly beat the Saints with a with a sort of a timeshare with Boston Scott, Kenny Gainwell, and a little bit of Miles Sanders sprinkling, because you really do need him for for the playoffs for the offense to really be able to function efficiently. Talking with Andrew DeCecco here on uh, Football at Four on 97.3 ESPN. Ryan Rothstein, Nick Earnshaw filling in for Mike Gill. Give Andrew a follow on Twitter at A. DiGecco NFL. Um, looking, at, looking at this Eagles team right now, uh, coming off the loss, what, what have we learned? What did you learn, Andrew, uh, from that game? Your, your biggest takeaway, and we can tie that into uh, you know, your key matchups and how it impacts your, your assessment on, on this matchup. Uh, against the Saints for the Birds. Well, my biggest takeaway was the communication breakdown that was very uncharacteristic for Jonathan Gannon's secondary, and you attribute it to, uh, you know, you have some different moving parts in there. You have your Reed Blankenship as a young player and Josiah Scott, who, of course, uh, was, was one, of the, uh, one of the players that you had was, was a culprit in one of the biggest plays of the game, probably the biggest play of the game. Um, but, I mean, one thing that, that you really um, – that I really took away from that game is that the team fought until the very end. I mean, you look at it, they, they lost uh, by a narrow margin with the backup quarterback while committing four turnovers. I mean, that's a pretty, that, that's very impressive when you consider that the Dallas Cowboys are a pretty formidable opponent and what they had to do to even be able to overcome the Eagles. Um, but I, I, I think that the Eagles have shown you that they can only beat themselves turnovers. You look at the, the loss against Washington, that was three turnovers. You look at um, Christmas Eve, that was four turnovers. So I, I think that those self-inflicted wounds are, are the only thing that can stop the, the offense, and, and they almost were able to pull it off. So I, I think that that was a, that was a big tell uh, for me. Andrew, we, we've been talking about Jalen Hurts a lot during the show, and should he play at all during the regular season the rest of the year? Would you, especially if the Eagles won this week against this New Orleans Saints, would you start him at all during the Giants game just so we can keep fresh and get some reps underneath him? You know, I would consider maybe playing him for a few series, maybe even a half, but I don't know if the risk outweighs uh, outweighs the reward, right? I mean, we've seen how some of these things, like you see the Kyler Murray injury and things like that, knowing how valuable Jalen Hurts is to the franchise, throwing out throwing him out there for a handful of reps, is that really worth it? I mean, but at the same time, he he would be essentially taking the field, you know, this is all hypothetical, but taking the field against uh, whomever on the 21st or 22nd of January, having not played since the Bears game, which is, I mean, I don't know, five, six weeks, you know, without, you know, a, a, a vital time. Um, I, I think you'd have to, you'd have to see where Jalen is as far as his recovery and you'd really have to maybe alter the game plan a little bit just to get him some completions and, and settle him into the game and not show a whole lot, obviously against the giants. But uh, I, I think that you have to at least consider it because I mean, going five or six weeks, I mean, you saw how, how slow they got off, how, how rocky of a start they got off against the lions 
having not played much in the preseason. So you don't want to you don't want to get out to a flat start in a playoff game. So I think that's something that has to be considered. Andrew, you look at the NFC playoff picture right now. Birds at thirteen and two, still looking to clinch. Minnesota twelve and three. They keep finding ways to win. San Francisco eleven and four. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter who's a quarterback. Uh, you have Tampa uh, clinging on to that best of the worst NFC South leader seven and eight. Dallas eleven and four. New York eight six and one. Washington seven seven and one. And then some other teams trying to fight for that seventh and final spot. Uh, who do you see getting into the NFC playoffs when it's all said and done? And, you know, give us a, a team or two, a pick or two that you don't want to see come playoff time. Man, it's tough, you know, because it, it wouldn't surprise me if Washington somehow stumbles their way in there with Carson Wentz at the helm. I mean, wouldn't that be, uh, wouldn't that be quite a, quite a storyline that, that would write itself. Um, I mean, it's, it's going to be, I mean, the, the Lions, uh, the Lions are a team. Uh, it's, it's hard to say, man. I, yeah. I think that when you, look at, when you look at somebody that you wouldn't want to face, if you're the Eagles, I would, I mean, no matter how, how bad they've been or how many injuries they've sustained along the offensive line, I don't know that you want to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, right? I mean, you, any team with Tom Brady at the helm is, is going to be dangerous. And you saw what the defense was able to do against Jalen Hurts last season in the playoffs. Obviously, he's he's come leaps and bounds, of course, he's been, you know, since that game in last January. But I think that that defense has been one that somehow will, will give him fit. So, you know, you couple that with with Tom Brady. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think that that could be a, a tough matchup, no matter what their record is. Yeah, listen, it, that's it's fair. Um, I don't think Tampa Bay is very good this year. That's not really saying anything we don't already know. But still, Tom Brady's not someone you look, ever look forward to playing. Aaron Rodgers, I think, could uh, fall under that category, too, if they end up sneaking yeah. in. So, yeah, yep, it's... I think um, so, too. I, yeah. No, go ahead, Andrew. You can, uh, you know, give us a point on that. Yeah, no, I, I think so too. They're they're playing some good football right now. They're obviously pounding the football with AJ Dillon. This this is his time of the year, right? I mean, when it gets colder out, I think you're, Aaron Rodgers. That's not a player you want to see in the playoffs. So again, when you get into the playoffs, those records, the regular season records, don't matter, and you have to be playing. It's all about who's who's hitting their hitting, hitting their stride at the right time, and that's certainly not a team you would want to see. Andrew, before we let you run here. Uh, a couple more questions, and uh, let's just let's get it back to the Eagles Saints. Uh, give us your your final thought. Um, anything else that you have yet to to mention? And you know, if you want to throw in a score prediction, we love our score predictions. Yeah, well, I, I think the Eagles defensive line should be in for another favorable matchup against the Saints. Obviously, uh, Ryan Ramchek, their their right tackle, is outstanding, but he was limited today. He's had an illness. Their left guard, Andrews Pete hasn't practiced with an ankle injury. So I think that that could, that could really set up for, for some early pressure on Andy Dalton, who, let's, let's face it, I mean, he, he's been sacked 18 times this year in his, in his 12 starts, but he's thrown eight interceptions this season against seven touchdowns, and he's only averaging 200 yards pass, 208 yards passing a game. I think that uh, they could really apply some pressure on him early, and the game could be uh, wrapped up around halftime if everybody plays to standard. So, I mean, if I'm looking at it, let's say Gardner Minshew is, is at the controls at quarterback this week. I, I would expect a, uh, somewhat of a, of a higher scoring game for the Eagles because let's not forget Marshawn Lattimore is a little bit banged up. Justin Evans, their second, and other secondary players a little bit banged up. And uh, Mar- uh, Marcus May, their safety, probably won't play with a shoulder injury. So they're going to be a little light in the secondary as well. So, I mean, I think that the Eagles could win – say 28 to 28, 13, 28, 17. Yeah, that, uh, you know, that certainly makes sense for me. Hopefully they can win this one, put all the other uncertainty and questions, uh, put it all to bed, lock everything up. Uh, and then obviously conversation shifts to the playoffs, hopefully with, uh, games all at the link. Andrew DiCecco football at four at a DiCecco NFL from inside the birds, uh, kind enough to spend a few minutes with us here on this December 29th. And Andrew, uh, I believe the next time we'll talk to you here on 97.3 uh, is next year. So I hope you have a great new year. Happy yeah. new year, buddy. Uh, and uh, corny joke, we'll talk to you next year. <laughs> Ryan, I appreciate you, man. Happy new year. Talk soon.